so I tried to um, let this mirror and kind of look like my old website where I expounded a lot on other photography that I thought could have been Lucy Foster's work. I just didn't want to go off on a tangent about Wilford Woodruff on my main page, but I'm just expanding this one. And so he was a really good journal taker. And so these are found in the church catalog. So in the church catalog, these are the youngest looking ones. There's one where his head is moving, but it's the same body angle, same background, same clothes. His hair looks maybe the slightest bit different. I think it was a different day. I really think he was moving his head. And so that one someone found on eBay, the one where his head is moving and it's slightly blurred. But it's so slight, I think people think it looks like he's younger. It looks like there are less wrinkles because his head's moving. I'm not going to pull that one up, but you can really just Google Wilford Woodruff Diggory type and see this person that was really excited to find a really a legitimate picture of Wilford. So, but he, um, it's in the church catalog. So it's um, open to the public, both of these. So, but here's Phoebe. And so when I look at these, here's what I'll just kind of show you real quick. Um, I'll give you the date that it says in this journal entry of August 23rd, 1844. We've talked about this before. I'm just doing it again. <laughs> So here you, there you see the 23rd. That looks like a crown. Like he would draw pictures, but he really, it was just important to him to keep down details of his everyday life. Um, he mentions that him and Phoebe got their miniatures taken by Lucy and Foster. So not that many people cared enough to write that in their journal, you know? So we know he and his wife had these daguerreotypes taken. So these are definitely daguerreotypes, and his journals later, like in 1850 or 1849, I have to look it up again. I'm just going to post my video. I'm going to edit this website some more. Right, I just, a year ago, like I just um, spent hours studying all the photography and Canon in Boston. He went to Boston, he and his wife. There's a family photo on a white background um, and there's others just of him individually um, but this is you can really see like it is a textured background if that makes sense it kind of looks cloudy like someone took a paintbrush and just sort of made a cloudy effect um, and it's not quite so obvious as an M is, but in both of these, you see at the very top, it's very dark. So it's not so obvious that it's a wavy background. I'm going to post other copies, actually, where you can see it looks wavy. Let me just look that up. Is it going to pull up? I'll just insert it. <laughs> some other copies of this picture where you can see actually this background it's like a sheet um but it's the style that's interesting i mean there's definitely you see there's reflective light and he was probably he was well over six feet some people say six four some just say eh, just barely over six feet and it was like five nine i put a link to that she just looks tall i don't know how old she was but he was I think he was taller than him, or he might have been shorter. I can't remember. I had it on my old website, and then I don't see it anymore, so I'll have to try to find that reference again. But my old website is just, like, gone, but... But you'll see a lot of different links. So this is all straight from my very old website, but... But you can just click, it'll open a new page. It says gold pencil case. You can see it doesn't really say gold pencil case. This 
someone thought it said good. Someone quoted it as good. Um, that really looks like an LD to me that came in up to question with talking to someone. Whether it's a good pencil case, gold pencil case, either way, <laughs> we've seen Foster met with Joseph Smith in April, so that gives you months where he's before Joseph Smith died. Uh, whether he traveled, I don't still don't think that debunks that I know his studio didn't open till like August, but I have a link to the actual newspaper, which I'm not gonna do right now, but it's it's here on the main page. This is the additional page here. And then just getting into the Bibbins family. And so I've just got all these links and stuff, but I've done this before, but this is Ancestry, which is a very legitimate, like they really scanned. This is the actual scan of the paper, someone with a pen, who was in the presence of the Bibbins family and asked him. In 1860, he was 38. So he, he very well, he could have been late 30s, early 40s, when my picture was copied from a daguerreotype and ended up in a Smith family album in Kendall County. And you can just look here. So this is not Ancestry website, but this guy, Elmer Dickinson, I was reading more about it one day, if you just go to the about page, passed away um, in 2018. So he was still alive when I bought the photograph. I find that fascinating. But his work when he created this was the 90s, so that's why it looks kind of just not so nice, you know? And it's not like he he didn't scan nicely, which is, I mean, it took millions of dollars. A multimillionaire helped create this whole project. And they're still going through all these papers, Joseph Smith papers. It's still happening, and that's why you have so many people working as archivists and historians. And so I think the guy that wrote the blog about my photo actually worked in the Joseph Smith papers. I thought that thought that was interesting. I tried talking to him. Um, I'm like, was that you? And then I researched that guy and double checked and I'm like almost 100% sure that was him. Didn't respond, but probably did. <laughs> anyway, um, and he talks about R.D. Foster. That's not Lucy Foster. But this is, yeah. And they ended up on his presidential campaign. You can just click on the bio there. But they've got all the references. You can really, if you can find access to the reference. But to me, it's just inconceivable. As my mom and I, especially, she's the one person that I do talk to about this. I don't have that many. I like my mom and one friend. But... They have their lives. They're not really, like, working on this with me. You know, I have one friend that did give me um, a really good, really good person to talk to. <laughs> so I have to be very forever grateful to her. She sent me YouTube of someone. She's like, I was like, I think I'll contact that person. Then you'll find out more about that story. Maybe we get published. But, but it's here. What do you see? He's on his presidential campaign. So it's like, how could he be on his presidential campaign, be a photographer, and not take a photo of him? Like, I'm just like, what? <laughs> so yeah, just going back to here, you can really... So his dad died, whoops, in 1859. So I'll show you. His mom is living with him. The census from the 1850s. So that one... Yeah, that one said J.S. That was 1850. So I've just spent hours looking at Ancestry. Like, I'm, I've worked hard on this. Even though my health has been pretty crappy and stuff. Do one more. So there it just says Joseph, but he's 28. It's still him. Because he was 38 in 1860. 28, 1850. So this person was like, he would have been way too young in 1844. 
to take a photo of Joseph Smith, although I mean, we do know nine-year-olds taking photos today, but yeah, of course, back then, probably needed to be an adult to get permission to use one of those. He was, you know, minus six years, he was 22. You know, Pennsylvania, it's like PA, Pennsylvania. I'm kind of looking, it just really explains more, even though this is not as nice as Ancestry. Um, if you try to look for Joseph Smith the third here, he's not considered a pioneer because after 1840, I guess. It was 1860 when he went to Kendall County, but they do talk about him. You can just search and find. So this guy basically found all these old newspapers and typed them out, but it wasn't him scanning it and getting MSI machine, all this, you know, a millionaire helped. It's only with the help of a millionaire that the Joseph Smith papers came to be because it took a lot of people to do this and handwriting experts and they really wanted to they did an excellent job it's all published whereas this was just so much i mean he worked really hard but he didn't have a millionaire helping him so he doesn't have beautiful scans of all these newspapers although it's happening you know I got the saints herald scanned at least but, I mean, there's, like, newspapers talking about Joseph Smith III, so. But you got Joseph Slocum, 1821. It gets very specific on this website. Wilkes Barre. So that's, look at my website. There's Wilkes Barre. There's Susquehanna. It's an hour drive of where J.S. Bivens was born. Um... And then he, um, Elisha Bibbins, his father, died around here, but he proselyted as a Methodist. He was a um, circuit writer for the Methodist Church. Helped convert Emma Smith's dad to Methodism. He just wasn't, he wasn't an um, atheist, but he just didn't believe in religion, organized religion or whatever. So I don't think he let, they keep saying he didn't let praying in the home is the story. And so she was, she'd pray outside of the congregation because that's what they did. They'd go in the woods and pray. Joseph Smith followed, liked Methodism as far as all the other religions. And that's what he got him praying in the woods. And I think he also felt like he should. And I'm sure there's a lot of good with, with those beliefs too. So, But you see there, he's still a clergyman up until he died but he Elisha Bibbins died visiting here but they say he's from Newark Kendall County Illinois and I think I've got the it's on the bottom right there saying he was 65 when he died so let's see does that match up with the 1850, here we go, 59, 1850, first for him to be 65, he died, 59, so nine years later. But it, they do, <laughs> he'd been in Orwell, I mean, those are a lot of these links, too, that, um, you yeah, have the book that was written about Emma's family. Just a tremendous amount of information is all these references, a lot of references for Elisha. But he was visiting Scranton, I guess his wife was with him, um, and and just back then, of course, they'd probably bury him there. But then you, here you got what I've added with Lucy Foster's work where you can just look at their photography. So, like, yeah, he didn't go to Utah, so that's why there's mystery a little bit. But a lot of people just say he was either Canon or at Lucy Foster, as far as 1840 pictures. And then slowly Utah grew, so. 
Then I went to New York. But then he died in Salt Lake City. It happened to a lot of people. A lot of people were like, oh, I don't want to go to Utah. Then they eventually found their way there and then died there. A lot of, a lot of these people. So a lot of them had a hard time when Joseph died, but. And then you see here on the website, you've just got links. So if the reference is this, you can just go there and see. I've never clicked on this, but yeah, so it's an amazing website. Um, but yeah, here's this. I have a link on here. I think Emma was, she was about 5'9", and she was 22. So, over six feet, we can really clearly see, you do see this in his picture too. See, this is cut off, I think that's the problem. But you, you'd see sort of a wave there. It looks more flat here, but things that uh, Gawain Weaver, I'll show you again real quick here. I didn't need to throw that on this page. His analysis. And I got in touch with him through through this guy. So this guy sold this photo album. I said, who did you have authenticate these pictures and verify they weren't fake? Um, and he, I just asked if he's like, well, I'll just, he, he was trying to help me find someone near where I lived. Where his, he didn't live where I lived, you know? But um, he asked people and got around and got me in touch with one guy in Hollywood and that guy referenced someone. He's like, if you're doing a scientific paper, you need to go to San Francisco. I'm like, so I did. So it was Rick Grunder that got me in touch with someone that got me in touch with Gawain Weaver. Who knows his stuff. Yeah. And wrote all this. So it being 1860s doesn't matter. You know, it, um, it's just sort of like the argument, like, can we place R.F. Adams near Emma? Probably not, you know, although I wasn't saying that she did go to St. Louis occasionally, but she could have done this, but it ended up in Julia's photo album, but it says Mrs. Joseph Smith and son Dave. So he's born November 1844 and he's still not a newborn, but he's still a baby. I did not a toddler yet. So they've dated it as 1845, presumably taking 1845. So that's where you get 1845. Um, but you just know, like there's so many pictures of David Hiram when there's a lot of pictures of people, it's really easy to quickly verify who they are. Whether they use forensic analysts, I don't know, but it, it's just such a perfect likeness. It didn't totally matter. You know, so it's neat to look at all the different pictures. But, oh yeah, there's a good presented to Mrs. Julia Middleton. So she was the oldest child of Joseph and Emma. She was adopted, but she was the oldest child. And just the styles changed so quick. So this is much later than 1860s, this style. But so in talking with Colin Weaver, it was, I was showing him Okay, we really think this was Lucy Foster's work because Wilford Woodruff is one person that really said Lucy and Foster took my picture. Okay. And so you do see lighting hitting his eyes at an angle, and the lights hitting his eyes at the almost exact same angle. You got dramatic side lighting. Whereas Jess Bibbins, it was, well, it was the 1860s. By then, he had a better studio than Lucy Foster did. Basing, this is not a very light background. Here with her, it got really dark right there. I think it was just later in the day. But there's a lamp. This looks like a lamp to me. Just how the light 
is hitting and it might have been a tall gas lamp or something but she still has light hitting about right there but there's a little bit of light coming from below but if this was a lamp it explains it just might have been placed more in front of him if that makes sense because it's really hitting from below that nostril so it's Whereas the death mass, the light's coming from here. So this is lighter, that's darker. So when I did the superimposition, this line matches up perfectly, though. So the lighting's totally different in the death mass than on my picture. <sighs> and so light's really hitting that upper lip. Does that make sense? And then there's also expression. Whereas you see there's this line going like that. Um, he also lost part of, not a whole tooth, but a huge chunk of maybe more than one tooth in 1832. So that could have caused this, or it could be an expression. But in Mosley's work, I see him pursing his lips. So his lip, lips look thinner if he was feeling intense, emotional, you know. But if he's relaxed, you know, or if he's not alive, he's really not going to purse his lips when he's dead. So, you know. Who knows what happened when he died. It could have made his lips swell more. But you definitely do see, especially when you up the contrast, you, it's a very definite, this is lower than that is. And that's right there. It goes up like this. This is lower than that. The middle of his lip goes down. <laughs> you know, but you, in your mind, you, um, you learn this in art, if you become an artist, that you see seems simple symbolically you're like I believe there's a line going like this because you see that looks like a hard line right there but then you see it looks a little different right there so these, these are soft lines there's a lot of different shadows and um but yeah the lighting in the background looks very similar especially between these two but it's appears to be a dark line there and there too but I'll throw in the one with him where you can see the background is um like draped sort of artistically on that side. So. But it's interesting when, and um, yeah, that's nothing like my picture and that's nothing like Bibbins. This is quite a bit lighter than this and it doesn't, this is, no oxidation, because you can still see such detail. And just how that looks, it's really, that's, that's the background. Whereas his background's really tall, it's very light. Um, you definitely, I don't see harsh lighting, side. And it, it, it's a style, you can go to a photo studio and get harsh lighting, but they'll, when I was trained to do portrait photography, you don't do that with older people, because it emphasizes wrinkles, emphasizes stuff. But because it did that, side lighting, you can see a lot of these details on this side of his face. Way better than you can see any details on his face. Or hers. Because they got even lighting, so it sort of blurs out wrinkles, so it's more flattering. So Bibbins did very flattering lighting. He had good lighting. It's later. Everyone's got their arm in a table. It's not up close. Like, it's not... They're all getting a three-quarter shot. Or as it seems with Lucy and Foster, it's just the women getting a three-quarter shot and the men are photographed up close. And the other thing is it's missing a sun stamp. Which ended. But I got a link here. August 1866. It's August 1866 when Emma starts talking about going to Plano. But they do explain that. Just in this article. Started in 61. So it's also possible. Could have been 1860. <laughs> so that's where Joseph Smith III was in Kendall County in the year 18, October 1860. So 1861, it would have had a stamp until 1866. 
August. Oh, sorry, 1864, I apologize. 1864 to 66 is when they had the tax, where they had to have a stamp on the back. So most of Bibbins' work shows a stamp, whereas this doesn't. This says photographer. This is photographic artist. So, but he did refer to himself as an artist. Hard to say, but yes, John Hassejack that owns this, he thinks this was Lucian Foster. So... Going back to here, I've just edited the, edited this slightly. We can see out of the entire state of Illinois, Newark and Plano, they're really close. 15 minute drive today, but you know, you get on a horse, not so bad. And so if you went to, if you looked at the microfilm, the church history library, you can find these. And so I wrote down, there you go, call number. This is what you need, so you can just go to church catalog. I think I should put a link so you can see where you can request it, if that makes sense. So, dear mother, is this from David Hiram? And he, he does make it very clear she came to Plano. So it wasn't until I looked at these that I knew, like, it wasn't just Joseph III that lived there. It was David Hiram and Alexander had some children there, one child. He was mostly um, traveling, but, but Joseph Smith III, I think, actually helped in the Saints Herald office building in Plano. So it's just the opportunity for J.S. Bibbins to run into them, because he's going to Plano anyway. His name is J.S., and you got another J.S. Like, I mean, sure, maybe they're paying their taxes, and they're in order of first neighbors. I just don't know. But Emma was the one that mentioned she wanted to get a negative taken. To me, that's very clear. She's trying to get something copied. It's huge. So even though someone's just like, oh, I'm not blown away by this. There's no smoking gun. That's too bad. Just really condescending. It's just like, if you're condescending, like, I'm not going to leave your comment on there. I'll address it at some point and as nicely as I can. But if I feel like someone's just trying to be negative to just get a rise out of me, I don't appreciate that. Um, but the other person I mentioned in a video, it was just sort of going from point to point to point to point. Kind of like anti-Mormons. They just, you have an answer, but then they just immediately go to another one. Because they're just so focused. You, you must be wrong. You've got to be wrong. You've got to be wrong. That's sort of the attitude of someone. After I found out who wrote the blog and read all this stuff, I hadn't put too much effort over the years. I was just kind of like, well, if we get published, they'll find out. You know, I made one effort three years ago to contact one person that I could easily find and find contact information for him. a woman, and she really didn't want to talk about that blog. So I was like, well, you know, you might want to take it down. But then I was like, whatever, it's good that the website's there because it helps with the provenance, really. And just shows for sure I didn't own it back then. So, um, but she, yeah, she does talk about Plano. All about Plano, going there. So I gotta come up there, gotta see you guys. When we say come up there, there's Nauvoo, there's Plano. And she did go. Just, uh, I think in August, she was helping out Alexander's wife and trying to beg Joe Smith III, just you know, don't let your, my sons go to keep going to Utah. They're just not gonna have success, was sort of what she said. She didn't think there was any point. She didn't want them bugging them early but nobody knew that you know they didn't realize she was discouraging them from going there and being all getting on their soapbox just like don't do that it's interesting to me um but yeah she would be the one maybe 1860 1867 that would have seen J.S. Bibbins maybe 
he might have traveled to the bigger city of Plano. I think it was bigger because I think from what I'm reading, I'm pretty sure Newark was like mostly farmland, but I don't know. Just trying to see what I can glean from this website. You know, but J.S. Bibbins, like that guy, confronted her dad. So Elisha Bibbins did. You know, but she could have easily been like, do, do you know? Like, I'd heard he lived around here, didn't you know? And then she might have been like, I'm trying to find someone like you to copy my negative. So. And he, his heart might have gone out to her and he might have just given her a good deal because she knew his dad. You know, there just there, there would have been so much to talk about. And he would have had every reason to be traveling around in this to promote his actual studio. But photographers do that today. They'll photograph outside, but then they'll also have a studio if they make enough. But he definitely had a studio. But um, anyway, I just recommend go ahead and go to Ancestry if you're just really curious. Um, go ahead, look up all the Smiths in Kendall County and see if you find someone that matches my picture. Let me know. I'm just, that's what I'm doing. That's why I've been trying to figure all this out. But um, I just feel a lot more confident as time goes by. And this might be the one. I mean, the one said artist. I think I've looked at the tax record. I've looked at everything. Joseph L. Yes, yeah, says artist there. I think the tax record said photographer artist, but anyway, that's him. The age matches up the year. So, yep. Anyway, 